<laughs> let's uh, let's move into the NCAA uh, meeting today. The Board of Governors recommended against the one-time transfer rule that would allow team or uh, players to move about freely one time in their college career without having to sit out. The official vote is actually going to happen on May 20th, but the Board of Governors, they didn't vote against it, but they recommended against it. Uh, Donna Shalala, you know, senator uh, involved in all of this process, she used the example of USC possibly not opening this fall, and 30-plus athletes possibly transferring east so that they can play this season. I I look at that as absolutely absurd that you were going to try and use a pandemic to protect universities. Like, I understand that, that the NCAA is in that business right now of trying to protect coaches and universities and whatever, but their initial mission that we've talked about 4 billion times was to protect the student athletes. That is their whole point. So if a Let's student cut athlete off the needs of the students oh. because we can't get our shit together as an organization. If a student athlete if we fail is, they fail. Yes. Great. If a student athlete is is on campus at USC or at Cal or at Stanford or whatever and Stanford is only doing online classes, whatever, and this player, one, wants to play, or two, isn't good at online classes and does better in an in-person setting, why would they not be allowed to transfer to whatever school on the East Coast that is open? There's a number of schools that have already said that they are going to be open in the fall. Why is that a bad thing? I don't understand. Um, <laughs> Matt jumps in. He says, how in the world will that affect USC? They have a history and are a feeder to the NFL. Well, the way that that would affect USC is, look. The we governor are have, might have the state continue to be locked down, right. and therefore the school doesn't even have the option to say we're going to open up or not. Which and in turn means that yeah. the, the there would be no college football on the West Coast. And if that yeah. is, the, it is going to be bananas. But I will tell you this. SEC schools will be open. They will be playing games. Whether it's in front of ACC nobody, schools. yeah, Pat, all of Big them. Ten school. The, the the first school to do this was Purdue. The yeah. very first school to come out was Purdue. This is high education. This is not Alabama LSU football. Okay, this is this is Purdue University. They put a freaking man on the moon. They are right? a Big Ten school, and Purdue understands exactly how important those television contracts are. The SEC will have football this fall, one way or another. Because there is no commissioner. There is no college football czar that makes a decision for everybody involved. Now, it would be nice if they would come out and say, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. Da, da, da. We may not have a bowl season. We may not have this. But, but there's no way to, to come out with a plan because we're still well, yeah, we don't just know. so far away from being able to put a, a hard and fast plan together. But the fact that so many of these places are saying, look, we – we think we're going to be through this. We believe in the minds of that are fighting this thing, and we think at, at come August, we're getting back to normal. Yes, and and I get it. I totally understand it. I don't know if I completely 100% agree with it, but I'm okay with it. Like, it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't bother me in the slightest, but it drives me insane for them to use an excuse like that because it sounds like they are only trying to protect the institution. Themselves. And yep. them, they're yes. not trying to protect the students or the individuals. They're trying to protect the institution, and that's the stuff that pisses me off. Yeah. There's no reason not to allow students to transfer. At least, at, Honestly, they should be allowed to do it as many times as they want. This, this, this great, great place of integrity that openly, fraudulently, you know, they, they committed fraud. They lied about people, and they used athletics to do it, by the way. And a lot of those athletics they used – with Title IX athletics, okay? Oh, yeah. It wasn't the this wasn't the football players and the basketball players and the baseball players, all right? This was the girl on the lacrosse team that's never played lacrosse a day in her life, or a rowing team and this other stuff. Like, like they are using and manipulating these rules that the NCAA has put into place and for for good reason, but but then you just they only care about the institution. 
Their whole business, the whole reason the NCAA was founded was on players' individual safety for the student athlete. What was best for the student athlete? And now they don't give a good gosh dang about the student athlete. Not at all. No. It's it's unbelievable. Protect our investment, protect our brand, protect our shield. If you really dig into the NCAA, I mean, they've got millions of dollars in lobbyists and whatnot. They honestly believe that they are going to get Congress to pass a federal law regarding the name, image, and likeness stuff, which is so why, they can write it. By the way, yeah. they want Congress to do it so they can write the law. Yeah, because yesterday. When, every, when we were talking about the name, image, likeness stuff, which obviously there's way more to dig into than that. But, uh, but yesterday when they did all that, they did not go even close to as far as the states are allowing these students to do, which is going to create a whole lot of problems going forward with the NCAA against individual states. Do you understand how many lawsuits that could end up being? I mean, it is yep. unbelievable. Yep. So yep. what they want to do is get Congress to... So, but what they did I with this? I swear to God, I wish I was. I wish I was smart enough. I could have handled the reading to go and to be an attorney. I really do. Here's, I would. I would make. I would do anything I could to make a living, just so I could spend all the rest of my free time. My family would hate me. It might even cost me them. But I would spend the rest of my waking moments in litigation with the NCAA. I would do it under my own dime. We uh next week at some point, probably going to have Lynn Simon back on, attorney out in California, who kind of kind of spearheaded the SB 206 uh, movement with Nancy Skinner. Um, we'll, we'll talk about this along with that. But this whole thing with them doing, they, they gave just a little bit with the name, image, likeness thing, and then it led them to today say, eh, we would recommend against not letting kids transfer without sitting out a year because it's all it might, about power it's yeah. all about control we want to tell these students what they can and can't do all day we don't care that it benefits us we don't care if it hurts us we don't care anything we just like to be able to tell them what they can and can't do yes and it drives me insane drives me insane. i hate i hate, I hate those people i mean oh. i i really i think they're evil i really think they're bad people hey you're probably right you're probably right. Let's uh let's go ahead and jump into this right quick. 